Now we come to the math of time complexity. To understand time complexity in a form of very simple expression, computer scientists define the big O notation, which is one of the many other notations dealing with time complexity, like the theta notation, the small O notation, and all. But in this course, of course, we'll only deal with the big O notation. Let's say that the order of time that we found for our algorithm is a quadratic function in n as displayed here through this graph. And our job is to find the upper bound for this function tn, all right? Now consider a function c1n square and here c1 is so chosen that this function never overtakes a function tn. But then we can choose another constant c2 such that c2n square is always greater than or equal to tn for all values of n greater than n naught. Can you see that? Now we can say that c2n square is an upper bound of tn because after some value of n, c2n square will always be greater than tn no matter what. But there may be many constants actually infinite number of constants that may be chosen such that the function that constant times n squared becomes the upper bound of the function tn. So we need a new definition to be precise. Mathematics is about defining things precisely and without ambiguity. All right. So we define what is known as the big O of a function. And listen carefully. Pause the video later and try to understand what we mean by it, okay? So the big O of n square is a set of all the functions, okay? Remember, big O is a set of functions. So big O of n square is a set of all those functions, fn, such that for some positive constants c and n naught, cn square will be greater than or equal to the function fn for all n greater than or equal to n naught. That is, after some point n naught, c n square will always be greater than f n. In general, the big O of a function g n is defined like this. It is a set of all the functions f n, such that for some positive constant c and n naught, c times g n will be greater than or equal to f n for all n greater than or equal to n naught. This is exactly the same definition as we saw above. Just that the function n square has been replaced by a general function g n. So this definition just gives us an idea of an upper bound and not how tight the upper bound is. Okay. We can choose some large constants c and n naught and show that the definition holds.